Welcome, welcome, patrons. I've been putting this off for a while now, honestly, just because the lore is just a bit of a mess in this area. Uh, but this video marks the beginning of my chantry phase of videos. And what better place to start than the woman who started it all, the prophet and bride of the maker, Andraste. Now, as a warning, in lore, Andraste's story is hotly debated and ever-changing, and this is true for what we have been given as well. So prepare for things to um, not mesh well, and whatever new media comes out, this whole video will probably be contradicted in some way. I also know that some of you want this to be spoilers, but honestly, there's like only one Andraste-related spoiler that I would add to this video, and it really doesn't change anything of what I'm about to say. So with all of that, the Prophet Andraste. The Two Andrastes. So before I just go off here, I do want to say that there are a lot of details about Andraste that just don't line up with one another. For example, we have two distinct stories about her youth, one in Codex Centuries and one laid out in World of Thetis. I would personally take the World of Thetis story as close as to what we will see in later games, as that's the newest information, but for your viewing pleasure, I'm just going to go over both origins, and then we will converge back into a mostly consistent timeline when we hit her marriage. You may also be asking, well, what about the Chant of Light? Why not use that version of the story? Well, because... In lore, the story of Andraste is in the Chant of Light, but the snippets that we have to actually read only include the meeting of her, the, the maker for the first time and some of her teachings. There's really nothing before her adult life. Codex Andraste so generally when I'm talking about codex entries that conflict with World of Thetis, I'm really talking about the ones from Origins. However, this specific entry has been in all three games and has never been edited. So what I'm about to say is mostly from the entry Andraste, Bride of the Maker, which is supposed to be a sermon from Divine Justinia II. Uh, now, quick note that this is not the one from Inquisition. She's the fifth. This divine is from the Exalted Age, about 400 years from modern day Theta. So there could be something said about, well, uh, this is just 400 year old information, therefore is not right. And modern day Theta believes another thing. But then like there's other parts of the lore that kind of go with this story rather than that. It's just, it's a mess, guys. It really is a mess. Anyway, the story. Andraste was from a tiny fishing village on the Waking Sea, likely Jader, that was attacked by Tevinter. She was enslaved and sold on the markets of Minrathis. She was raised in slavery, but escaped and made the long journey back to her homeland, where she rose from nothing to be the wife of Matharoth. Every day she sang songs to the Alamari gods, asking for her people to be freed, but they did not answer. Instead, the Maker did. He showed her all that he had made, how man had forgotten him, and how pissed he was about it. But her singing was so beautiful, he heard it and fell in love, asking for her to be his bride. But she did not want to forsake her people. Instead, she begged him to return, and he agreed to give man another chance. World of Thetis, Andraste As is told by Chantry scholars, Andraste was born to a Syrian mother named Brona and an Alamari father, Eldoroth. The exact year and place of her birth are debated, but the most widely accepted year slash city is negative 203 ancient in Denerim. There is an Orlesian city that claims the title of her birthplace, Jader, as well as dozens of others across the lower part of Thetis. To put this into perspective with the rest of Thetis, as this is far removed from the media in the series, the Syrian was a tribe that inhabited what is now Orlay, and the Alamari occupied Ferelden. Both tribes' cultures would largely disappear after the founding of each nation, although some Alamari culture does linger in Ferelden. The first blight also ended the year she was born, but it's unknown if she was born before or after Dumont was slain. Her father, Eldoroth, was the chief of the tribe, which was one of the largest and most prosperous in northern Ferelden. At an early age, she began having dreams of what World of Thetis calls an obscure god, the Maker. And I just kind of find the wording interesting here, as it's not an unknown god, but just an obscure one. Like, perhaps the Maker was already known, but not many people knew of him. Um, I have no more proof in this line of thinking, but just something to keep in mind. Anyway, she began to interpret these troubling dreams as answers to questions she had about the world. Now, we know that Andraste had a half-sister named Halasere. I'm going to choose that's how it's pronounced, I actually don't know. But whose parents were Eldoroth and his alchemy advisor. Halasere died in a very strange way with Andraste present, but the details have been lost to history. However, we know that the incident scarred Andraste. 
She was reported to have some sort of lung sickness that left her unable to bear children for a decade. She would display strange behavior, like becoming still and unresponsive, and afterwards report that she heard voices, see auras, and the sound of bells. Later in life, Andraste claimed that her sister's death was because of the heresy of her sister's mother, who had been whispering to the old gods. In negative 187 ancient, when Andraste was around 16, she was married to Mafaroth as a way to create a union between the Alamari border. At the time, it was the largest alliance the Alamari had ever seen. After their marriage, Andraste's father was killed in a Devendra raid, with Andraste being kidnapped and enslaved. This left control of the region and one of the largest armies in Thetis, second only to Devendra itself, to Mafaroth. However, a large part of his people were only loyal to Eldoroth, so he was able to negotiate Andraste's release for the loyalty of his people. And here we converge back to one story. In short, when Andraste was a slave for most of her childhood, escaped as a young woman to marry a powerful chieftain, and then came back to free her people after seeing a vision of the Maker. The other Andraste was born into a wealthy Elamari family, had a strange childhood accident, always saw visions of the Maker but didn't quite know what it was, was married off in a political power move, briefly enslaved, and then saw the Maker himself so went on a rampage against Deventer. Uh, at the base facts, I kind of actually like the Codex entry story more, but uh, I actually think the canon's going to lean more towards the world of Thetis. The Prophet's Path Before I go on with Andrasi's historical legacy, let's talk about her familial legacy. Because she was too weak to bear children at first, Mafra sired three sons with his concubine, Gilavon. Izarath, Inverion, and Verald. Gilavon would die somehow, it's not really said, and Andraste adopted the three boys as her own. Eventually, Andraste and Mafrath did have two children together, daughters named Ibris and Vival. There is some history to all five children, but for the most part, it isn't relevant to Andraste, so we're just going to forget they exist and move on. The one thing to note is that all direct descendants of Andraste were daughters. This made tracking her line incredibly difficult as her daughters took their husband's name when they married, and in the chaos of the Second Blight, a lot of records were destroyed. While many have claimed heritage to Andraste, all have been disproven and no known heirs exist today. Anyway, in the year negative 186 ancient, just a year after her wedding, the Maker hears Andraste singing such a beautiful song for mourning of her people that he falls in love with her. He shows himself to her in the physical world and offers to make her his bride, taking her away from the flawed mortal realm. However, she is reluctant to leave her life, people, and husband behind, and instead beg the Maker to return to all his creations and create a new paradise in the mortal realm. The Maker agreed, but only if all mortals destroyed their false gods. He also offered to aid Andraste in her task by using his abilities against her enemies, and thus Andraste became the Maker's betrothed. It's here when she began to preach openly about the Maker, and in a time where Tevinter's magisters were enslaving most of Thetis and causing terrible magical mishaps that cause a blight, her words of magic must serve man, not roll over him proved very popular. Around negative 180 ancient, when she was only 23 years old, Entraste Mafrath called an exalted march against the Tevinter Imperium and rallied the South together to war. A big part of the appeal of Andraste, other than her teachings of a god that was everything the Imperior wasn't, was that she did seem to have the Maker on her side. Her initial advance upon the Imperium was greatly helped by a ton of natural disasters and an elven slave uprising. Now let's briefly talk about that uprising. Led by Shartan, he too became one of her followers, and the two worked together to take down Tevinter. As the story goes, in the Chant of Light, Shartan and a large group of other elves were on the run from their masters. Where in Tevinter they are running from is debated. World of Thetis gives a list of Marnus Pell, Solus, Marathius, and has small as possible options before using Valdorma in the official translation. But anyway, Shartan was able to rally the elves to make their own weapons and kill their masters who were hunting them. And as they celebrated their victory, they heard Andraste marching on Tevinter. Shartan crept to the Alamari camp, getting caught by Havard, childhood friend of Mafroth, we'll get to him later, who saw that he was no friend of Tevinter and took him to meet Andraste. Shartan gathered the other escaped slaves and heard her message to the Maker, saying that they will march alongside Andraste so that the elves will have a hand in their own freedom. There is also a rumor that at some point Shartan and Andraste were lovers, although this is highly looked down upon by the Chantry, who try to pretend that Shartan doesn't even exist, to be honest. And while Shartan will get his own video, something to note is that Chantry scholars are not sure if Shartan existed, not in like the erasure sense, but in the like actual historical sense. 
It could be that Shartan is a title that was given to any uprising leader. There is also a theory among scholars that it could be that elven myths of a trickster warrior leading a rebellion among tyrants got mixed in with history. However, no matter the truth, most in Thetis believe that there was at least one elven man called Shartan, either by name or by title, that Andraste met with. Andraste and her army fought all around Thetis, and there are various stories of her visiting places, meeting people, having a babari, with all varying degrees of historical accuracy. As players, we actually hear more of these stories existing than actually hearing them, but one we know is from Kirkwall. When she reached what is now Kirkwall, she went alone to the top of Mount Sundermount. She stayed there for three days, and when she returned, she wept as if her heart was broken. What that means, I am uncertain. Battle and Betrayal What became known as the Battle of the Valerian Fields became one of the most famous battles that Andraste fought. In negative 171 Ancient, when Andraste was about 32 years old, the Exalted March met head-on with the armies of Tevinter, and history remembers it as being the most bloody of her march. Andraste is said to have more than 10,000 men, and Shortan to have enough elven archers to blacken the sky, but Tevinter's army was numberless. During this battle, Shartan saved Andraste from a wall of ice, using his archers to send fire arrows to her aid, and, as the Chant of Light says, he was named her champion and gave him a blade that belonged to her mother. Right, right on the battlefield. Uh, a bit of an odd choice, I think, but uh, one that is likely not to be too accurate. But yeah, Shartan is Andraste's champion. But while Andraste did win this battle, she suffered heavy losses. Much of the chain of command was lost, and it was becoming clear that Andraste would not stop until she had ended Tevinter. And as they went deeper and deeper into Tevinter territory, they were losing more men than they could gain, becoming surrounded by their enemies, and all in all, things looked grim. Although the Chantry sort of shies over this part. Now, as the Chant of Light goes, Mothroth soon became jealous with all that his wife was doing. He was jealous of the Maker for stealing his wife, and then Andraste for commanding the respect of the people that he so wanted. Or, as historians of Thetis suggest, he may have foreseen the loss of Andraste coming, and wanting to preserve her legacy and everything that he had fought for rather than be smashed by the Imperium and lose everything, his betrayal was rooted in wanting to make her a martyr and secure her victory in legend. So, a little after the Battle of Valerian Fields and negative 170 Ancient, he made a secret pact with the Archon Hesarian, leader of Tevinter, and together they would call a truce for Andraste's head. And here we have a bit of a split in lore again. In parts of the Chant of Light we have, it notes that Andraste was captured outside the gates of Minrathis after her army carved their way through Tevinter, while almost every other source of lore we have say she was captured in Navarra. I personally think the chance version makes a bit more sense, but your results may vary. In the chance version of the tale, on the eve of battle with Minrathis itself, Andraste takes a moment to consult the Maker. Mafroth takes her to a silver pool where you can clearly hear the heavens, and takes her there, where she is captured and subdued by Mafroth herself. Havard stood between Andraste and her captors, but he was struck down. And every other lore source, including World of Thetis, which also has the Chant of Light published in it, and that makes me so upset that, like, the same book has two conflicting things of information, but whatever. Andraste was making her way to a stronghold in Navarra City. Tevinter forces captured her and took her to Minrathis. Havard, Mafara's closest friend and only witness to the betrayal, was against this and tried to defend her, but was gravely wounded. And now we finally converge back into one timeline, but Andraste is taken to the gates of Minrathis for all to see. She was burned alive in front of a large crowd, and while it was meant to be a message for those who would stand against the Imperium, the locals of the Imperium had not really cared about the Alamari siege, as they had been focused on the slave uprising. To them, Andraste was just some random woman who was now being brutalized, and this shamed many who were watching the pyre. Shartan, who was called the Liberator in the Chant of Light for some reason, I don't know, stormed the pyre but was shot by a storm of arrows and killed before he could save her, along with hundreds of his people. Uh, now there's actually a line in Origins about Shartan dying on a stake right next to Andraste, but this was never mentioned, like, again in the series, so I'm just assuming that this isn't the case anymore. Andraste was burned in front of all and did not cry out in pain, which according to the chant made many Tevinters question if she truly was a servant of a god. Her final words were one of mercy. Maker of the world, forgive them. They have lived too long in shadow without your light to guide them. Be with your children now, O Maker. Hesarian did, however, see that she was suffering. 
In her last moments, our Hesarian took pity on Andraste and stabbed her in the heart, ending her pain. Later on, Hesarian claimed that he heard the voice of the Maker ordering him to do so, and when her blood hit the ground, he became a faithful servant of the Maker. However, some believe that this conversion was only because he realized he could not fight her influence on his people. There is also an argument that his mother coincidentally was a sort of prophet whose fate ended poorly as well, but we will talk more about that when we get into Hesarian in another video, blah blah blah. Now, according to the chant, after she died, the skies opened up in a terrible storm that made even the Tevinters convinced the gods were unhappy. Havard, who was able to make it back to Minrathis, despaired that he came too late to save her, but when he touched her ashes, his ears filled with song and saw a vision of her dressed in starlight. She knelt to him, saying, Rise, Aegis of the Faith, the Maker shall never forget you so long as I remember. And he was healed. He gathered her ashes and smuggled them out of Tevinter to bring them to her homeland of Ferelden. But their resting place is unknown. Her followers believe that she is now at the Maker's side, watching over Thetis trying to once again persuade the Maker to come back to the mortals. Because he's now also upset that they murdered his bride. <laughs> Also a random fun fact, but in the very first novel for the series, Andraste is noted to have a cross from when she was burned, but that is literally the only time in the series she has that. Now as that novel was written before a lot of the details of the series was ironed out, I'm assuming it's one of those things that was nixed because it was a bit too on the nose, uh, but all other images of Andraste burning have her on just a stake. Legacy. Now, because there are a lot of large parts to Andraste's story, there will need to be a separate videos on Hesaria and Mafroth, her kids, and so much more, but I don't want to leave you hanging on what happens next. The short version is, Mafroth tried to continue her work, but Hesarian exposed her betrayal. Mafroth's sons overthrew him, and between the three created the nations of Orlay, Navara, and Ferelden. For about 160 years after her death, the cult of the Maker still held strong in Thetis, but it was largely unorganized. It wasn't until King Cordelius Draken, who will be getting his own video of Orlay, came along that it became the religion that we know today. Obviously, there was so much more to her legacy in the Chantry, but at that point, we just start treading into what the Chantry believes, so I'll save that for later. But nonetheless, this is the prophet that so many in Thetis know and love. Well, except for Tevinter. Tevinter takes a stance that Andraste wasn't the Maker's chosen or his bride, but it's a very powerful mage who spread the word of the Maker. Now, a quick thing that didn't really fit into Andraste's life story is what she looked like. In pretty much every depiction of Andraste, she's a blonde-haired woman. But there is one line of dialogue in the series that states her as a redhead. Uh, no other source for that, and I don't really know why it would be important, but uh, apparently it might. And that, dear patrons, is all that I have on Andraste. Do you still have lingering questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theory? Feel free to tweet me at Atgildrathon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. The rest are all.